Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today GoPro has announced that GoPro Labs, which has a ton of extra features, is now available for three additional cameras. The GoPro Hero 9, the GoPro Max, the GoPro Hero 7, and already the GoPro Hero 8 was announced last year. The big one here is the GoPro 9, Max, and 7, so I guess the big three, if you will. Previously, those ones weren't compatible with this. Now, GoPro Labs is kind of like their advanced beta features. It's a way you can completely geek out on features that aren't in the camera itself, and then maybe some of those features become part of the camera. For example, last year, when they released GoPro Labs, they had a sunset and sunrise sort of feature in it. That became part of the GoPro Hero 9 when it was announced last summer, last fall, whatever it was. Now, in addition to making GoPro Labs available for the three other cameras that previously weren't compatible, they've actually added a pile of new features as well. Those new features are for all the cameras, or almost all the cameras, uh, and they're number one, the IMU motion triggers. So previously, they did triggers based on lots of things, including GPS and motion in front of the lens, but this allows you to trigger it based on the actual camera movement itself. Super useful for indoors when you want to just have it trigger based on the camera moving. The next is USB power triggering. The primary use case there is dash cam. If you've got a GoPro attached to your car, as soon as you turn the car on, it'll start recording. As soon as you turn the car off, it loses power, it stops recording. After that, you get the ability to set maximum shutter angle. You can go ahead and now enable exposure lock. Then there's a new archive mode, which is honestly a really bad name for this feature. It should just basically be called like dumb friend mode. What allows you to do is to make it so that when you hand your camera to someone else, the only thing they can do is press start and stop to record something. They can't accidentally like swipe the photo and then take a photo of you or take a time lapse or all the bad things that always seems to happen when you give your GoPro to someone else. After that, there are additional extensions for just the Hero 8 and Hero 9, which are live streaming modes. Uh, so you can basically swipe in front of a QR code and it goes immediately into live streaming. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts with certain settings that you want for that live stream. Uh, and last but not least, Hero 9 GPS time-based synchronization, as opposed to just the app and manual synchronization of time. Now that's in addition to all the other previous features, and there are a ton of them. If I show you this list right here, go to the very, very top, there's tons and tons of things like going to be able to set it to start recording at a certain time, uh, speed activation, and I do have a past video on all those features, all the initial set of features that you can check on the corner there, so I won't redo some of that. But what I will do is show you how to get this started from start to finish on the Hero 9, but it's exactly the same on all these other cameras. So the first thing you do is to go ahead and crack open your GoPro, take out the battery, because that's the only way to get to the SD card, realistically. Uh, take the SD card, and then stick it in an SD card reader of some sort, and stick it inside your computer to gopro.com slash labs. And once you're there, you'll scroll down and you'll click on get started and you'll find the firmware for your camera. Now this firmware will not come magically from like GoPro's cloud via your app and all that kind of stuff. You have to manually download it. I'm hoping they fix that eventually and just like have it baked into all the firmware, but for now it's still a manual firmware download. So I'm gonna choose the GoPro Hero 9 Black and then it's gonna download a file. So there we go. I'll go ahead and click save to download that there. Oh, and a quick note here, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or anything like that, simply whack that like button at the bottom. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, once it's downloaded, you'll see that's in my downloads folder there. I'm just gonna double click it once to get that update folder out of it. Uh, and then once I have the update folder, I copy that folder just like that and go to my SD card, which happens to be called no name. It's a horrible name, sorry. Uh, and then I paste it right there. Uh, and you can see it's pasting at the top level. So again, unzip it first. It's gotta be out of the zip file. Take the whole folder uh, called update as is and put it at the top of your micro SD card. Then go ahead and take your micro SD card, stick it back in your GoPro. There we go. Stick the battery back in. And then I'll put this up here before I turn it on so you can see what's going on. And I'll turn on the camera and it'll do the update of the firmware. There we go, updating just like that. The update will usually take like uh, 30 to 60 seconds, not that very long, it's, it's pretty quick. There we go, update complete. It is as simple as that. Uh, now, once you go ahead and clear this out, okay, now it powers back on, and you'll see the GoPro Labs beta firmware is shown there, it showed very, very briefly, just to let you know. Oh, and since folks will ask, I'm using the Max Lens mod on here. I've been using it as like my stock default uh, go-to daily driver, if you will, for a couple of months now, because it's just so smooth for running primarily for me. Uh, and I've got my full video on that up in the corner as well. Otherwise, you won't notice any other difference on the unit itself. What you need to do is to grab your phone or your computer to start creating QR codes. And that's really the core of how GoPro Labs works. It's all about using QR codes and the idea there being that they can stuff in a ton of features without all the expense, GoPro's expense that is, of adding more to UI or user interface menus in the camera itself. The downside is it's a bit more clumsy. And there's basically three ways you can do it. One, there's actually a QR code app, I'll link it down below, uh, that you can take out on your phone. In fact, I'll do that right now. 
It's called QR control. Oh man, I tipped over my pile. It's called QR control right there. Uh, and what it allows you to do is set all these things and then have the QR codes at the bottom. So you could say, I want this resolution. Uh, you can say, I want these certain preferences or settings, all the customization that you want. And it spits out a QR code that you then scan. Two, you can use the desktop site if you want to. A bit clunky, but we'll do that because it's easy for me to show you. And then three, you can use the mobile site to basically do the same thing. At the end of the day, it's just generating a QR code that you scan. How does that work? Well, no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead now and take this labs. I'm gonna go to gopro.com slash labs. Again, the same place we went before to download the file. Scroll on down to create your code. And what you've got here is sort of like your basic starting point. Uh, so you see the different actions that you want. I'm gonna use the new USB power triggered one though, since I haven't shown that one previously. Uh, and you can see a first an explainer of it. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead back up top and I'm gonna click on it. And that brings me to this page right there that shows me all the settings. And so what this one QR code is doing is basically to make it so that when I plug it into power, it'll automatically turn on and start recording. It's as simple as that. But you can stack all these if you want to, and maybe I'll show you that in a second. So. First I do is I take my GoPro and what you're gonna see here, I'm gonna move the screen of the way so it sees the QR code in just a second. So this way you, you can see it in the background there but the camera yet, can't yet. I'm gonna put it just like this and then boom, you see it says shut it down until USB power. So shut it down, it basically set the QR code, it's that quick. The second it sees that QR code, it's done. Now what I've got that is that out of the way and I've got my handy dandy uh, USB battery pack with my favorite like $9 uh, triplicate charger cable here of lightning, USB-C and micro USB. I'm gonna go ahead and I don't have my usual GoPro door in here. It's on, um, which other camera? Uh, I was using these in the water last week. So I didn't want to have the Lonzi door. Like you see this one right there. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I have the normal door on there because I was back in the water. So I go ahead and just take this and I plug it in the side. There we go. And give it a couple seconds to power on. Make sure that's turned on there. There we go, okay. So GoPro Labs beta firmware, and then it says max lens mode enabled, and it starts recording. It's as simple as that. Now what's cool here is the way I've set it up is that 10 seconds after uh, I pull the power, it'll stop recording. So here we go, so pull this, and one, well you can see the countdown right there. Once it gets to 20 seconds, that's basically 10 seconds later, uh, it should stop recording and shut back down again. Again, this is ideally for the dash cam scenarios, but there's plenty of other scenarios where you might use it based on USB power. There we go, it's 20 seconds because it's 10 seconds after that pull the power uh, and shut down until USB power. And it's as simple as that. And you can keep doing this over and over again. But what's really interesting is you can start to change some of the modes on this and some of the other settings. And the way you do that is compounding the different QR codes. So if you go back to the computer here, you see at the bottom there's a QR code right there. This one, I highlight this like that. I go copy, and that's the base QR code uh, for the USB side of it. Then I go to QR control, and this is where I can customize all the other settings. I can customize camera mode and video resolution and hyper smooth and hindsight and uh, protune controls. I mean, each one of these expands out to tons and tons of different options, camera preferences. You can see there's a lot of options you can tweak in here. Uh, so I'm gonna choose something that's really obvious. So I'm gonna go with beep volume at 100%. And I know that sounds stupid and trivial, and it is, uh, but I want it something that's easier for you to hear and see, because with the max lens mod on there right now, it means that I can't access all the other modes. So just kind of what I'm going with. Uh, so I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna paste that additional command. So there we go. And now I've got this new QR code right there. So again, I can close this, I'll leave this open for now. Take this, you can see it, here we go. And oh, I got to turn it on first, obviously. So make sure you're turned on. And you'll see again, it'll first show me the GoPro Labs side of it. There we go. There we go, boom, you saw that little flash in. Shut down until USB power. And you heard just then, by the way, beep volume is 100%. So right there alone, I already showed you the fact that it worked because before it did not go beep, beep, beep. It just simply shut off because my beeps were off. So let's go back now and look at one of the motion triggers instead. So we're going back to the commands. We'll trigger motion triggers. Here we go. Uh, and I'm gonna pick something. So I'm gonna say, sensitivity for both to really anything at all. We're just gonna keep it just like that. Uh, and so I'm gonna go down here. So I've got my QR code there. I'm gonna go ahead now and I've got this turned on. Uh, I'm gonna point at this and you'll see, there we go, just showed it, uh, detect. And so starting detection algorithm, there we go. Uh, and so right now you can see the actual threshold. Let me just get this a little bit lower, uh, zoom it in. And that little bump right there triggered it on. There, I won't touch it anymore. And this is because the way of the setting, if you look at my screen, it says hold time. So five seconds after the motion has stopped, then it'll go ahead and uh, stop recording. So watch this, just light tap of the table. 
and that's it. Uh, and you can adjust the sensitivity there. And that, again, there's all sorts of crazy weird scenarios. Like I could put this on the backside of a door or who knows what, like that's the point of this. The point of GoPro Labs is to be able to do weird things that GoPro couldn't afford from a test standpoint uh, to put in the production firmware for everyone. Uh, they can put it in this like beta state. Uh, and again, I showed all these in my previous video, all the more practical things like the ability to have it based on speed. So as you're, to so put this in the car, for example, and have it trigger once it gets to a certain threshold, uh, the sunset sunrise stuff I showed in the past. And the cool thing is all this stuff is available for the Hero 7 and the Hero 9, Hero 8, and the Max. So all the most recent GoPro cameras, which is notable because GoPro hasn't really updated firmware on older cameras ever. Like they've never really added new features, meaningful new features once that model year is done. Okay, now one final note before I forget, if you've got this thing like constantly doing its thing and you just want to clear it all, um, both the app as well as the GoPro site has the ability just to wipe everything out clean. So you just go back to the QR control customizer, go down to the bottom and basically just scan what is effectively a blank QR code. So just like this, uh, there we go, there we go. And boom, I just simply scanned it out. I guess you can't see that. Uh, so I just take this and I simply scan it like that. Uh, and now it's basically cleared out, ready to go. Now there is one thing I wanted to briefly mention, which has nothing to do with GoPro Labs, but does have everything to do with GoPro. And that's in their most recent GoPro app update, the one that came out just last week. Uh, they removed the ability for you to enable or toggle ProTune settings from the smartphone app itself. You can still do it from the camera, you can do it from uh, the smart remote, just triggered again as I tap the table, uh, and you can do it I guess those two places. But that's not super practical if you're flying FPV, if you're doing anything else where you've got the camera in a way that you can't access the back screen anymore. Uh, so you've got it all like locked in this rig perfectly. Uh, maybe I've mounted up somewhere high and I'm using these new triggers to trigger that. It's kind of just annoying. And I get that ProTune is something that is rarely used in the grand scheme of things, especially changing ProTune settings. Uh, but it's still really frustrating to take away something that is designed for power users and ultimately designed for the same group of people uh, that'll be doing like your most fantastic footage out there and spending all that extra time to really tweak to get to the best footage possible. So my point there being, I hope GoPro considers changing. I hope people feedback. I keep on triggering this. I'm sorry. It's just going to keep on doing its thing. Uh, I hope GoPro gets that feedback and puts it back in the app. Anyways, if you found this video interesting or something like that, just simply whack that button bottom there. I've got plenty more sports technology goodness coming as well as some new GoPro stuff that I've just got to finish editing. See, even it's excited about this, uh, editing that video out uh, to get out to you. Pretty cool uh, testing some new GoPro gear that I think you're going to find uh, pretty interesting, I guess. With that, have a good one. <laughs>